The history of evolution is filled with frauds. One of the most insidious, however, was Haeckel's embryonic drawings. Darwin even presented them as proof of evolution in his book The Descent of Man before Haeckel's fraudulent drawings were exposed. After over a century of being known as frauds, the drawings still appear in science textbooks as proof of evolution. The irony of this black eye on evolution is that, as usual, evolutionists are doing it to themselves. I just had to investigate. Despite his embryonic drawings, Ernst Haeckel had a profound effect on the biological sciences. He was the first to coin the terms ecology, phylogeny, anthropogeny, phylum, and stem cell. He recognized that a small group of unicellular and colonial eukaryotes was unique and diverse enough to form their own cladistic kingdom that he called Protista. Haeckel took an interest in embryology in the 1850s when he was still in school. He became an inherent of the recapitulation theory which rose to popular attention in the 1820s. Recapitulation theory held that embryos develop by going through the preliminary steps in their evolution. For example, a human embryo might start out as a unicellular organism, grow to resemble a fish-like animal, ancestor, then an amphibian, and so on. Being proposed nearly four decades before the Darwinian synthesis of evolution, it was derived from Jean-Baptiste Lamarck's theory that the mechanism for evolution was from traits developed during the organism's lifetime that are then passed on. Haeckel was profoundly inspired after he read Darwin's Origin of Species in 1864. He was particularly interested in the section on embryology, which referred generally to Carl von Baer's work in embryology, including an anecdotal reference that at an early stage, embryos were so similar that it could be impossible to tell whether an unlabeled specimen was of a mammal, a bird, or of a reptile. Darwin also added his own work on the embryos of barnacles, demonstrating that they were indeed crustaceans. Haeckel interpreted the work of Darwin and Baer to mean that those early embryonic stages were expressions of the stages of evolution which the organism had gone through. This would be in opposition to Baer's third law of embryology. Every embryo of a given animal form, instead of passing through the other forms, rather becomes separated from them. This was explained even further by the first and second laws. The more general characteristics of a large group appear earlier in the embryo than the more special characteristics. And from the most general forms, the less general are developed, and so on, until finally the most special arises. Darwin cautioned against the idea that one organism or embryonic stage is higher or lower, or more or less evolved. Disregarding this, Haeckel published his vast new synthesis of Darwin, Lamarck, and his own version of recapitulation theory, the two-volume General Morphology, in 1866. Being extremely technical, the book sold poorly. However, Haeckel was a charismatic speaker and continued popularizing his version of evolution and embryology through public lectures to students as well as the general public in Jena, a university city in Germany. In order to reach a less technical audience, he called a student's transcript of his lectures to publish History of Creation in 1868. This less technical version of his work sold very well. A complimentary copy of the book was sent to Ludwig Rutemeyer, a professor of zoology and comparative anatomy at the University of Basel who had already made a reputation in arranging fossil mammals in an evolutionary lineage. Rudemeyer published a review of Haeckel's book in the peer-reviewed journal Archives of Anthropology. Being an advocate for the Darwinian synthesis, he expressed horror at Haeckel's depiction of humanity's supposedly elevated place in the natural world and his depictions of tentative evolutionary trees for the general public. Rudemeyer took issue with Haeckel's drawings of embryonic stages of development, citing that one and the same, moreover incorrectly interpreted woodcut is presented to the reader three times in a row and with three different captions as the embryo of a dog, a chick, and the turtle. Haeckel had borrowed woodcuts from Theodore Bischoff and created his drawings, depicting the initial stages as fully identical. Bischoff himself confirmed that while the original woodcuts for the individual species were, in fact, very similar, Haeckel's drawings downplayed the very minor differences. Haeckel's response to these criticisms was not to deny his embellishments, but to justify them by claiming that the original woodcuts were not typical specimens. Even with this justification, Rudolf Virchow, Haeckel's inspiration in science, proclaimed the drawings to be mere hypotheses. When Darwin published The Descent of Man, he included drawings of embryos, but they were reprints of works by Thomas Huckley and and Bischoff directly. Darwin didn't understand German and was unable to grasp Haeckel's work, so having heard of it, he referred to Haeckel's work in The Descent of Man by expressing that 
If it had appeared before my essay had been written, I should probably never have completed it. In the decades since, Haeckel's work has, surprisingly, been very influential. Although his recapitulation theory was rejected, research into embryology has shown that the many stages of development do occur according to Bayer's laws. For example, both fish and mammals do develop pharyngeal pouches, which develop into gills in fish and the ears and lower jaws in mammals. For another example, all chordates, such as fish and humans, belong to a superphylum called deuterostomes, which is distinguished from their sister clade, protostomia, by one embryonic development. Development. During embryonic development, both clades develop a small hole called a blastophore. In protostomes, the hole becomes the mouth. In deuterostomes, like us, the hole becomes the anus. As Baer predicted, they begin as a general structure, which eventually develops into a more specific structure. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, scientific publications were particularly slow to be translated or even circulated. In the first few years after Haeckel's works were published, American scholars were able to read them, but not the criticisms. The drawings were then published in textbooks as examples of embryology. Even after their exposure reached the U.S., the drawings were often published in textbooks due to copyright reasons. Examining any creationist list of textbooks that supposedly still use Heckel's drawings, you'll notice that far too often, the drawings they're referring to aren't actually Heckel's drawings. They come from completely different artists or hybridize Heckel's work with others. For the past 50 years, the vast majority of textbooks have stopped using any drawings at all to illustrate embryology and have opted for actual pictures of embryos. When Heckel presented his fraudulent embryos, he was not trying to prove evolution. He was attempting to prove his own theory of recapitulation, something which the theory of evolution has never predicted and when combined with Heckel's Lamarckian ideas, is actually antithetical to Darwin's mechanisms of evolution. Even if the embryos had been genuine, not only would they have no effect on evolution, they would also have been used by creationists as proof for a common designer, just like homology is today. In this series, I have often touted the virtues of peer review. In researching Heckel's embryos, I was given a view into what happens beyond peer review. In science, when a theory makes erroneous predictions, the correct procedure is to either revise or reject the theory. It was evolutionary scientists, not creationists, who discovered these frauds, and in this case, recapitulation theory was rejected. And that's another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.